class, my name is Jalen Jean-Baptiste, and today I will be presenting Small Blocks. An overview of what we will be going over today. What is smallpox? The causes of smallpox, symptoms, diagnosis, history of smallpox, which includes epidemics in the past, biological warfare, first treatments and experiment, and the disease today and in the future. What is smallpox? Smallpox is an infectious disease that is unique to humans. So that basically means that it can't be found in any other organism. Causes of smallpox. There are two main causes for smallpox, and that is the, they are the variola major virus and the variola minor virus. The variola major virus accounts for more of the most of the more severe cases of smallpox, and the variola minor virus accounts for the ones that most people have recovered from. If you take notice here on the left, I mean, yes, on the left, you'll see a picture of the variola major virus, and here is a picture of the variola minor virus. Symptoms of smallpox. Symptoms of smallpox don't tend to show themselves until 7 to 17 days after the first exposure to the disease. But when, when they start showing themselves, you can experience fever, headaches, chills, vomiting, and one of the, one of the most telltale signs that you have smallpox are the small lesions that occur all over the infected patient's body. Diagnosis. There's three main ways you can diagnose smallpox. One is to observe the clinical signs and symptoms of smallpox. The second is to isolate the virus from the blood or lesions. And the last one is to identify antibodies that the body is making and see if those are typical antibodies of to, um, the in response to smallpox. Now, you, now that you know our background of smallpox, I'll go into some history. Smallpox has been proven to date, date back all the way to, the, to ancient Egyptian times because historians have found lesions on, on mummified bodies that resemble the ones of smallpox. One of the mummies that they found lesions on are Ramses V, and he was a pharaoh in ancient Egyptian times. Here is a picture of his mummy. And right next to his nose is a picture of a preserved um, small um, lesion right here. In Roman times, many historians believe that the first stages of the Roman Empire coincided with a smallpox epidemic within Rome. So many people believe that it is one of the main factors for the Roman decline of power. And in the 18th century, Smallpox is believed to be was believed to be at its peak because that when the annual death toll of smallpox that year, I mean in, in that century was four hundred thousand people. So to put that in perspective, that's about everyone in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma dying every single year. Now smallpox had always been sequestered to the eastern um, side of the world, and it got to the west by early exploration. The explorers from France, Portugal, Spain, and England would come over on boats such as these here, and they could carry someone who had been infected with disease, and when they got to the eastern side of the world, that the disease spread as it did in the, I mean, I'm sorry, in the western side of, side of the, world, the world, the disease spread like as it did in the east. As in the Roman Empire, the Aztec civilization was affected as well. They, many historians believe that that is why they declined as well. In this picture, it depicts a medicine woman trying to heal an infected person with smallpox. But you can see that this person is going through a lot of pain, and the de that's why it was easy for many people to just die and say, no, So biological warfare. In the French and Indian War, which is a war fought between France, Britain, and Native American tribes, a British general decided to, an easy way to get rid of his enemies were to give them a gift. But this gift was actually um, bedding that, was, that, that had been exposed to the smallpox disease. So when the gift was given to the Native American people, it killed off many people in their civilization. This picture depicts trading of how the bed sheet could be here and the trading and handing off to the Native American people. With small
smallpox all over the world, scientists really started to find, uh, started to, really started to search for a cure for the disease. One of these scientists were was Edward Jenner. He was a scientist from England, and he invented the a first the first successful vaccination for smallpox. He could because he found a connection between cowpox and smallpox. Cowpox is part of the pox family, such as smallpox, but it is not. It is not as severe as smallpox and, is, and it is easy to recover from. His theory was that since cowpox is so much similar to smallpox, if you infect someone with a cowpox strand, their body can get used, um, can recover from that, and when they get exposed to smallpox, their adaptive immunity can kick in and say that they've seen the, the person has seen something like this before, and it, it won't affect them as it would if someone was not vaccinated. So to check his theory, he did an experiment. He took a cowpox strand from a dairy maid because dairy maids were all constantly exposed to cows and that's where you get cowpox from. So after taking the strand from the dairy maid, he infected a young boy, he, a young boy with the strand. He let the boy recover and then he infected him with a smallpox strand and observed. He found that the child developed a slight fever for a few days, but the fever went away and the child did not develop smallpox. So he concluded that his theory was correct and that you, that you can use cowpox as a successful treatment for smallpox. The only problem with his experiment was that the vaccination of cowpox did not provide um, lifetime immunity from smallpox. So the person who got vaccinated might have to get vaccinated again throughout their lifetime. Because of that flaw in gender design, that's why it's not, that there's no, that's why that vaccine isn't now we, now we use a vaccine that is, that if you that it can if you get vaccinated it can either prevent smallpox from occurring or it can decrease the severity of your symptoms so it will not it won't be as severe as if you did not get vaccinated but there is still no cure for smallpox so smallpox today it has smallpox has been considered to be eradicated since 1979 and by the World, um, World Health Organization, also known as WHO. So eradication means that there is no more in the world, but there's no more wild, wild cases of smallpox. But there are two strands left in the world. They're both held in secure laboratory bases, one in the United States and one in Russia. There is no current research going into smallpox since there has been no need to find a cure since 1979, but many scientists look into the future just to destroy those last two strands because of because of the chance of an accidental outbreak and a bioterrorism attack. This is my decided that they would keep the strand just in case because it, if they wanted to start looking into future research, like let's say there's a disease in the future that is similar to smallpox, they can test it, they can test um, to try to find, find a cure for smallpox and see if that cure can help them find a cure for the disease in the future. Um, do you know what their eradication strategies were um, when they decided to eradicate smallpox? No, I'm pretty sure that the they vaccinated people that were that could get um, that were um, sorry had the financial benefits to get the vaccination, but it it died out on its own in like third world countries. So the people there, I guess they were, they got lucky and they just died out because they didn't get the the vaccination was actually quite expensive. So. It just, I guess it didn't go to those third world countries more often, but it, 
died out in that 